So, through our political editor today, Andrew Clennell, we're hearing that the government will announce major assistance programs for businesses in the May budget. Of course, this news doesn't help those in the smashed tourism industry in Queensland who were hoping that the Treasurer's presence in Cairns this week would see announcements related to maybe an extension of JobKeeper or something. None of the sort. Although we did see a $1.2 billion extension to the apprenticeship bonus for employers, which will run until the end of September. But where now for the tourism sector? Joining me now is Daniel Grishman, Chief Executive of the Queensland Tourism Industry Council. Daniel, thank you for your time. Have you had a chance to meet up with Josh Frydenberg? Well, I heard Josh Frydenberg in Cairns yesterday morning and I did hear him again today in Brisbane at a, 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 a Aki a breakfast and a, a similar message was delivered. The, the Treasurer points out rightly that the, Queen, the Australian economy is going much better than most other economies around the world. And he also points out that JobKeeper has uh, delivered incredible support for the industry and the economy. And he's right on all counts. What we're still hoping for is that an announcement will be forthcoming about how the support will be continued beyond JobKeeper once that comes to an end, that program, as he keeps saying. But for many parts of our industry, Chris, the situation hasn't improved all that much. We have international borders still closed. That has an absolutely catastrophic impact on many businesses. And it's not just in Cairns. It's not just in Queensland. It's around the country. And we need to make sure that those businesses can stay in place, can hang on to their staff so that they're actually ready for a recovery when the opportunity arises. OK, we're hearing that there will be major delivery of programs for businesses that are doing it tough but can hold on if they're given assistance in May, there's a six or seven week gap, maybe even before it passes Parliament, there's probably uh, a two month to three month gap. Can the tourism sector hold on in that time? But many businesses, many businesses, Chris, won't be able to. I mean, they're hanging on by their fingernails now and I speak to those operators regularly up in Cairns, as I said, and elsewhere. It's also on the Gold Coast and our territory is Queensland, but I know the same applies to many other parts of Australia. That many businesses are hanging on by their fingernails. Some are doing OK, and we hear these reports where Australian travellers, Australian visitors are delivering strong business in accommodation and other parts, but others, the reef operators, uh, for instance, they're doing it really tough. Uh, I spoke to one yesterday, their business, a, ma a massive and uh, significant business in Cairns is down 85%, and we see the pictures as we speak. Uh, they have uh, really a big problem on their hand. They want to keep on the, onto their, uh, hang on to their skills staff and once they lose their staff if they have to shed them it's not that easy to get them all back with the skills they need to deliver the services we have to deliver to domestic and international visitors so just on just on international really visitors situation. before i let you go international visitors is there any way forward apart from waiting for the world to be covid19 free is there any way before that we could have a system where there are vaccine passports that allow people to come in only if they've had the jab well, we certainly hope to see more collaboration between airlines, the federal government and also the industry more generally to put in place a, a roadmap uh, that, ma that tells us how we can move towards reopening the borders. Yeah. It probably won't be wholesale, every border is open, but New Zealand initially, we already have some sort of arrangement that's not quite working the way we had hoped, yeah. but possibly other countries, Singapore, Taiwan, Korea, Japan, there may be other places that have a fairly good management of COVID in place, and hopefully we can see some steps towards an opening of those markets, at least for our industry. Daniel Gushwin, thank you very much for your time this afternoon. Thank you, Chris.